Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Hope you all are staying safe and healthy. First of all, thank you all for your love and support. It keeps me motivated and also all your requests. Um, they challenge me and I get to learn a lot of new things from them. So please keep them coming. Now, many of you have asked me to make videos on certain topics like how to tune your violin or how to play gamakas or to explain the notation that I provide. So I thought I will make a bunch of these videos explaining you these concepts and also show you some tips, tricks, some techniques, exercises so that you can use them and improvise your uh, playing. Now in this video, I'm going to explain how to tune your violin and also show you how to tune your violin. Okay. So when we say tune your violin, what exactly are we tuning the violin to? Right, you need a reference to tune your violin to. That reference is nothing but a sound. Now, what sound are you going to tune that to? Right? Because right now when I'm talking, even that's a sound. But but at what particular sound are you going to pick and then tune your violin to? That's what we call as Shruti. Okay. Now, like I said, when I'm talking it's um, it's producing sound right it's a sound frequency a sound frequency is nothing but um, more of a property of pitch okay do not confuse pitch with volume or loudness pitch is entirely different than volume or loudness usually females have high pitch and males have lower pitch okay and a human ear can hear anywhere between 20 to 20,000 hertz of sound frequencies, okay? You cannot hear anything beyond them. So, again, you know, hertz is a measure of frequency. So, like you, you measure a weight of something in kilograms or pounds, you measure frequency in terms of hertz, okay? Now, like I said, there is this huge range of frequency, sound, you know, let's say just sounds, sound frequencies that you can hear. We pick particular frequencies from this huge range, okay? And when we play or sing these particular frequencies together, they are pleasant to hear and that's what forms music, okay? So... What do we do? We pick one of such frequency and then tune our violin to that particular frequency. Okay. Now think of it as a radio. If you have to listen to a particular station, say Radio Michi, if you want to listen to Radio Michi, you tune your radios, right? Like if you take your old radios or the radios in the cars, you have to tune it to a certain frequency. So if you tune it to 96.5, you'll get radio Michi. It's the same concept where, say for example, if you tune to 440 hertz, that sound, the sound that's produced at 440 hertz is nothing but Shruti 6. If you want to tune to Shruti 2, you need to tune it to 295 hertz, okay? Now, should you know all these frequency numbers? No. You know, the Shruti Petty and the apps that you have in the smartphones made it easier for us, wherein you don't have to remember these frequency numbers. All that you need to remember or just click or tune to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or 1, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. And then it is going to produce that sound at that particular frequency for you. And then you start tuning your violin to that particular uh, Shruti number. Okay. Now, in my notation, I usually provide the Shruti in alphabetical uh, terms like A, B, C, D. Now, why do I do that? Right. You know, because in the in Indian classical music, we usually 
uh, define Shruti in terms of numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But here I'm giving you the Shruti also in alphabetical uh, representation, which, is, which are nothing but the Western notes, okay? Now, why do I do that? Because uh, if you look at any Tambura app nowadays, or even the Shruti Petis that are coming right uh, in today's market, they have the alphabetical representation also along with the um, uh, digital number representation. Now, why is that so? Because the Shruti concept is only very unique or um, re regional. You know, it's, it's more Indian classical oriented, the Shruti concept. Western music really doesn't have that concept of Shruti, okay? Because um, the exact definition of Shruti would be, from my perspective, would be that you are going to pick a particular sound like I said, a frequency. Um, in this case, we will say a Shruti number. And then we will make that as our base note. And the base note in Indian classical music is Sa, the Shachamam. So we make that as our base note. And then we build our rest of the six notes on top of that. Okay. Now, that's the reason. And we call that base note as tonic note. Okay. And that's the reason we have the Shruti concept. Whereas in Western music, you really don't, they don't take any bass note and form the rest of the scale. No, they don't, they don't really do that, okay? So it's, it's, a, it's a bit different. They might have that concept, but it's not exactly apples to apples, okay? So that's the reason I provide you the alphabetical uh, form of the Shruti also in my notation. Okay, now many people try to relate A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the Western note to Sarigama Padanisa. Never do that. There is no one-to-one -one relation of A, B, C, D, E, F, G to Sarigama Padanisa unless you are tuning to that particular note, then you can do a correlation. There is a relation between A, B, C, D, E, F, G and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Shruti, okay? So never try to just take um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G and try to say uh, A is my Sa, B is my Re. No, they keep changing. So here is a chart where I'm giving you a one-to-one -one uh, relationship between the alphabetical uh, note and the number representation of Shruti. So when we say Shruti 1, it is related to note C. Shruti 2 is D, so on and so forth, okay? Now, when you make your Sa as D, now you'll make the Sa as D, then you start applying your one-to-one -one relation from D to Sarigama Padanisa. I see a lot of people where they generalize C as to be C to be always Sa. That's not the case. No. Sa always changes. Sa could be anything. Sa can be C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F. It can be anything. Okay. The alphabetical representation, the Western note representation is always a one-to-one -one relation to the Shruti and not a one-to-one -one relation to the Sarigama Padanisa unless and until you pick your Shruti and tune your violin or start singing. So hope that was a bit helpful on the Shruti part. Um, if you still have any doubts or if that was more confusing, uh, there are lots and lots of other videos on YouTube. Uh, you can go watch them and uh, they have explained them very clearly. Hope that uh, clears out most of your doubts or questions. Now, coming to tuning. So the other reason why I provide the Shruti in uh, alphabetical representation or the Western note representation is because I use uh, an app called Pano Tuner. This one, hope you can see, there you go. It's called Pano Tuner, P-A-N-O-T 
T-U-N-E-R. Okay. So what is the difference between the Pano Tuner and the Tambura? So Tambura is giving you a command. It is saying, here is a sound. Go tune your violin to this particular sound. Right. So you start tuning your violin and listening to the tune and then um, you might you might be almost there. You might tune your violin to almost that sound. Right. But you're not sure whether you really tune your violin to that particular sound or not. Right. Pano tuner, on the other hand, it takes a command. It doesn't give you a command. It takes a command. It says, give me a sound and I'm going to tell you what note you're playing. OK, so if I say the Shruti is two, right, you, what do you do? You you go to the Tambura app, you select uh, two in the Tambura app or uh, uh, two relates to D, right? So you select D as your Shruti and the Tambura is going to play the Shruti for you. So it, it gives you that sound and then you're tuning your violin to that particular sound, right? So you, you would be like, OK, um, let's see. Now, did you tune it to the correct note? This is mainly for the beginners, okay? This is mainly for the beginners where you might, you might still not be that mature enough to uh, register that particular sound that's coming out of Tambura, okay? So for mainly for the beginners or intermediate people who still don't have that knowledge of a particular note, you can use Pano Tuner. What does Pano Tuner do, as I said? It takes the command, so, and it is going to tell you which note you're playing. Right? That's much easier. It's much easier for you to look at the piano tuner and you know, it, it's going to show you whether you are a bit high or low. When you are exactly at the D, at that particular frequency, it shows you a green bar. That means that you are in tune, okay? So if you are a beginner, I recommend you using a piano tuner just for tuning your violin, okay? Do not use that for, for playing along with the Shruti, okay? Because... I highly recommend you using Tambura as much as possible because mainly in Indian music, you need to register that sound. Okay? When you register that sound, keep listening, keep hearing that sound, the Shruti sound, that's when eventually you will be able to um, write your own notation. That's how you know, you know, you keep playing, 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 and you, that particular note gets registered in your mind. And then eventually you will be able to tell what note someone is playing or someone is singing. Because I get a lot of uh, questions on how to uh, how to recognize the notes of a particular song. You know, there is no shortcut for that. You know, this is how you will recognize the notes of a particular song by playing, playing, listening. You know, um, having shruti all the time whenever you're playing. It is going to register that note in your mind. Okay. But the piano tuner is more like a hack. It's a more like a hack f for you to tune your violin. Okay, so I highly recommend that you uh, use tambura as much as possible. Okay, now coming to how to tune your violin. Now that you know the concept of shruti and which shruti to pick, so you know the all the frequency hertz don't 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 worry about that much okay just put it aside you know i just wanted to give you the background of that so if you want you know take that information well and good if not just put it aside just put, take a tambura or an app or a shruti petty just tune it to the shruti that i provide you either a, a, a b c d representation or one two three four five six seven representation now coming to how to tune your violin um before i show you I would like to uh, request mainly the beginners. Do not, do not take this as a reference and try to tune your violence.
I highly recommend that you first contact your guru, your teacher and ask them how to tune your violin. Sit with them and ask them to show you how to tune your violin and tune your violin in their presence as much as possible. Why? Because 80% of the beginners, when they try to tune the violin, they break the strings. When I was a beginner, I tuned it and I broke the string. And I know a lot of people, a lot of beginners who did the same thing and they broke the violin, uh, sorry, the, the string. Okay, so please, if you try to tune your violin by watching this video, and if you break your strings, please do not curse me. Okay. Now, how to tune your violin? Okay. Now take your violin and flip it towards you. Okay, in this form, so that your strings are facing you. Okay. Now, if you're a beginner, the very first thing that you want to do is do not turn these. These are called pegs. Okay. Do not turn these pegs clockwise. No, do not turn them hard or clockwise immediately. Never do that, okay? Now, there are pegs and there are screws here. Which ones do you really use to tune your wire? Right? So the rule of thumb is, if you, so say for example, you first this pluck your wire, okay? Now, as I said, go to panel tuner, Open up the pano tuner and when you plug the pano, your string, it is going to show you the note that your string is currently tuned to. Okay. Now let me make it a bit upper shruti so that we, will, we can tune it back. Okay. Now let's see. Okay, it is in between C and C, sorry, it is in between D and C sharp. Now, I want to tune it to D, right? So, it was very close to D, but not exactly D. What are you going to do? Are you going to turn the pegs? Never do that, okay? Use these um, screws whenever there's, there is half to one note difference in the shruti okay try and tune it with these screws but if if the string sound is way low like say let's say it, it went to g sharp which is like way 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 low so you need to go from g sharp to a b c d four four notes above you know that's when you use the pegs anytime you want to go two or more notes above than what it, what your string currently is that's when you use these pegs you use these screws when you want to um, go up or down half or one note up or down than what it actually uh, um, already is okay so now if you are a beginner watch this very carefully okay if you are a beginner and if you want to tune your star string like I said first pluck it know the number or know the note that it is yet and then you want to go high do not turn it this way okay first loosen up the peg okay turn it towards yourself loosen it up first loosen it up what does that do that gives you an idea of how stiff the peg is how hard the peg is screwed inside now the concept of peg is not just a key or a turning it's a screwing concept you turn and then screw it in you push it you turn and push it in so that it gets logged into the holes and then you know it it doesn't get loosened up easily okay so now as i said first loosen it up then turn it a little bit up now strum again strum your violin again i'm still at g sharp now little bit up like you see if you if you just do this 
it's not going to screw in that's not screwing in what do you do while you're turning it you're pushing it a little bit inside now strum it again i'm at about d okay i i'm more than d now okay now like i said once you're near to the note that you want to tune to what do you do you use the screws okay start that's it i'm at d now okay use the screws loosen it up so it goes down tighten it up if you want to go high okay now once you know once you tuned your sa string now you need to tune your pa string okay now before we get to that one another thing is in carnatic music we usually tune our violins to sa pa sa pa okay sa pa sa pa mandrastai sa mandrastai pa madhyastai sa madhyastai pa okay now once we uh, have the sa string tune how are you going to tune the pa string here and the pa string here now this sa string is the same concept like i tuned this sa string okay you tune the same way loosen it up first then tighten it up little bit strum the string look at the pa note you know the alphabet that it's showing if you have to increase a little bit more turn it up and then strum it again and then if you are close to that note then go up here and turn the screw okay now once you tune your sa string how are you going to tune your pa string okay what do i recommend is play sa re ga ma on your sa string because you already tuned your sa string right when you play the ma look at the piano tuner for the note so ma is g okay g is your ma now put your little finger right on top of the ma finger okay right on top of the ma position put your uh, little finger that is ma 2 okay now when you play ma 2 that is g sharp okay now the note next to ma 2 is pa okay you can either place your little finger on pa here and play it is going to show you that the pa is a okay you can either do that or just place the ma position okay look at the piano tuner for that note of ma which is a in our case because we tuned our sa to d your ma becomes a okay once your ma is a you put your little finger and it shows you that the ma 2 is g sharp okay once you know that g sharp is ma 2 the next note is pa so you can just look at the piano tuner while playing the ma 2 and it will show you that the next note is a so that's how you would know that it's a the other way is if you already know how to play pa on this second string if you already know how to play pa on the sa string on the sa string if you know how to play pa like this go ahead and play pa keep that sound in your mind and try to tune this or the first method that i told you put your finger ma play ma 2 then the note next to ma 2 is pa so put your pa finger with the little finger and then look at pa note tuner while you play the pa note and it is going to show that it's a that you then you just tune your pa string to a just the same way like you tune your sa string loosen up the 
peg, tighten it a little bit, strum your string, look at the piano tuner, if you're close enough, then go ahead and use the screws, if you're not, tighten up the peg again, strum again, look at the piano tuner, use your screws and that's how you, you, you tune your violin, okay? So in my notation, I sometimes provide the tuning and the, in the tuning I say tune uh, your violins to parsa, parsa for this particular song. Uh, now Hindustani, uh, in Hindustani violin, they usually tune their violins to parsa, parsa. And we in Carnatic, we tune it to sa, pa, sa, pa. Now, when do you tune to pa, sa, pa, sa versus sa, pa, sa, pa? You know, why do I exclusively provide for a particular song uh, to tune it to pa, sa, pa, sa? That's because violin in general, like when, when we think of violin, it's like a high-pitched instrument, one of the high-pitched instruments. Now, in Western music, they always tune these strings to G, D, A, E. Why? When you try and tune this sa string to A, it becomes very stiff. Okay? There's a lot of tension in the string. If you go beyond A, there are high chances that you might break the string. Okay? Why? Because that string is designed to, to withhold, probably withhold that, that much of tension of A, okay? And uh, maybe you can tune it to A sharp, maybe you can tune it to B, which is much higher. But, you know, when I tried once and I broke my string, so I never do that. <laughs> uh, so instead, what do we do? So we cannot tune this beyond A, okay? Uh, maybe you can, but um, I don't recommend it, okay? So even if you tune it to A, you tune your sa string to A, it, is, it becomes very stiff and when mainly with Indian classical music where we have a lot of gamakas going up and down, you might cut your fingers, okay? I, I once did that and I cut my finger once. So I usually don't tune my sa string to anything beyond probably G, okay? Anything beyond G, G is like 5. Okay, so anything beyond five, which is five and a half shruti or six or six and a half or seven. Okay, so so how are we going to deal with this problem, right? Instead, instead of tuning this string, we will tune this string because this string can go up till D, right? So, but it's a lower D. It's it's a low base D, not the madhyama shruti, but lower. But still, when you tune this. So you can tune this to A. So if you want to tune the, say say if you want to tune to Shruti 7, which is B, right? So you can tune this um, to B, but please do not try. Um, you might be able to tune this to B, but it would be very, very, very high tension um, in the string. Instead, I'm going to tune this to B because the max that this string can sustain probably is D and B is nothing but two notes below D. Um, so I might be able to use this as my sa instead of this. So that's the only reason I tune my violin to pa sa pa sa is when there is a very high shruti or very low shruti like even C. C is shruti one, right? When you try to tune your sa string to C, see what happens. As you can hear, you know, there, there's a kind of uh, guzzy noise in the string. That's because the, the string is very loose right now. You know, it's not uh, that tightened up. You know, it doesn't have that tension. Violin in general, you know, it's, it's a Western instrument, right? And then it's a, one of the high-pitched instruments. And when you tune it to its max tension of the strings, it produces a very beautiful sound. Okay, so if we are tuning to such a low, this this string can withstand up till A, which is Shruti 6, but instead, instead you are tuning it to Shruti 1, which makes no sense, 
right because it's very very low and it gives out that gushy sound so for such low shrutis also i tune my pa string to the sa string to make it sa and then uh, play that as sa and then this becomes pa and this becomes sa so that's the only reason i tune my violin to pa sa pa sa instead of sa pa sa pa now you do not have to um uh, tune your violence to the shruti that i mentioned in my notation you can tune your violin to any shruti that your violin is comfortable to okay and then you can play you can just follow the notes the sarigama padani notes and then you should be you should be good because like i said indian music follows the shruti concept uh, whereas the western music does not because they always tune their violence to g d a e uh, and we don't we we keep changing the sa string to the shruti that we want to so unless you want to play a particular song with the karaoke or with the song playing in the background and you want to match the song you do not have to tune it to the shruti that i mentioned okay so play it in any shruti you want just follow the notation and you should be good to go now um as i said before this is mainly for the beginners please 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 contact your guru or teacher and have their guidance in tuning the violin if you're tuning for, for the very first time sit with them and have them teach you how to uh, tune the violin okay hope this was helpful to you guys uh please leave your comments suggestions um or whatever questions concerns thoughts uh, abuses or whatever you have uh, please uh, put them in the comment section and uh, hope again hope this was helpful i'll be making a couple more videos with a um, few other concepts so see you all next time uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please do so and hit the bell icon so that you get all the updates stay safe and stay healthy bye